Well, here I am at the Organic Show in Olympia in London, and I've just been down there uh, working for the Organico uh, stand, cooking some fish dishes from Tin Fish. And this is all sustainable fish, and it's Charles there, he's a, he's a really passionate guy, really into what he's selling and doing. And I think that that actually sort of rubs off on me. And what I'm trying to do is get across to the general public here that you can use tin fish to make really interesting dishes. It isn't a case of just opening it up, putting it on a plate, pile of salad. You can come up with something a little bit different, with a little bit of effort. And OK, yeah, I'm a trained chef, but anything that I do, and I've done down there, is all easy to do. It's store covered dishes. Really, really simple to do. So, also what I like about this show, everybody down there, all the stands, they're all like-minded people, whether it's from perfume to oils to Charles's fish and his dried products as well, the Organico stand there. It's all really, really interesting stuff that they are so passionate about, and it's us as consumers that need to buy into that. Next dish. Yeah, that's the cheese way. It only got two times I could do that, didn't it? Then we get another board. Or Phil has to get his finger out and do some work. Right, wash my hands. Okay. So the second one, so we got our, our mackerel dish in the oven. Um, and the second one I was going to do was good old tuna. Good old tin tuna. And the tuna we've got here, this is the one in brine. You can get the one in the oil. You've got the good one, you've got the, um, the uh, yellowfin tuna and, and they're in olive oil or you've got the vegetable oil. But this is the, the, the standard, this is the one that I think everybody's got tin, tins of tuna at home, standby. He makes it with a bit of mayonnaise, a bit of sweet corn, he's got his sandwich filling or it goes in a salad. Um, I'm not doing anything different, anything special. It's going to be a, it's going to be a fish cake. But it was just really a, 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 an uncoated fish cake. It's going to be a dry fish cake. No flour, egg and bread crumb because then you're adding more fat, more... Um, more of the bad stuff, really. This is more healthy, because I'm thinking the whole thing, you know, the organic, the fair trade thing, and, and, and the sustainability, let's look at something a little bit more healthy. So, we've got some cooked potatoes here. Again, you wouldn't necessarily cook potatoes to make a fish cake. This is a more of a leftovers thing. I don't know about you, but at home we always make excess, because any spuds that we've got left over on a Sunday roast get sliced up, fried up with a bit of bacon and egg for, for a breakfast or a brunch on the Monday. Um, so it's a case of not creating something uh, specifically, this is more of a leftovers. What I've done, I've drained the uh, tuna from the brine, because that's, that's good for nothing, it's a salt water uh, mixture. It's been processed, it's been um, um, actually uh, pasteurized in the tin in that brine. But all I've done is drain it off, sat the tuna on, onto paper, and that just gets rid of the excess. The spuds I'm putting in there, we've actually got the skins as well, because the best part of a potato is literally just under the skin. So why would you want to get rid of that, especially as it's going to be a cake? If you're going to make a potato cake, then you're not really going to see um, pure white creamy potatoes, are you? So if you think about it, it saves you time, and also, um, you're getting the goodness of, of, of the product. So, we've got some crushed up potatoes in there. Again, you don't have to put it through potato ricers. You're thinking housekeeping at home and, and, and time and motion and all of that. It's all about making it as simple as you can with as little mess and a little effort. A little bit of pepper and a little bit of salt. Bearing in mind that the, um, the tuna is actually seasoned enough, but what you're, adding, you're, you're seasoning is the potato. This is just cooked plain boiled potatoes in a little bit of salt, but you need to add a little bit more. And into that, we're going to put um, a little mix of, we've got some capers, um, we've got some anchovy. Now, the nice thing about anchovy, that's going to give us the salty kick. You're not going to put too much in there, but chop it up so when you get that bite into the fish cake, you get that little burst of, uh, of extra kick of flavour. The capers give us the vinegar angle, and we're going to roughly chop those. These are, these are quite small anyway but we just want to get a little bit of flavour in there um, and keep them quite coarse so that, as I said, when you bite into these things you get those little kicks of salt from the anchovy the vinegar comes through from the uh, caper that goes in we've also got some uh, olives here, some black olives these are stoned olives 
Um, I don't mean like they're, hey man, these are like, wow, I feel cool. These are actually pitted, and what that means is you can actually slice them up without having that worry that you're going to crack into a stone, ruin your knife, or Lee's knife, because he's very uh, generously lent me his knife, and um, pop those in as well. Again, this you can see this Italian flavoured thing coming on. You've got tuna, it's a bit of a niçoise, but in a hot niçoise in a cake. Okay, then finally the anchovy, we're going to just put a couple of these fellas in. These are lovely, nice and fat. And I don't think people realise that anchovies are tinned. Um, I did some work for, um, for one of the major supermarkets about with anchovies, and the prime, the big fat ones, they're actually laid into tins by women. They're sat around the table and they're laying them in the tins. There's no mechanical way of getting the, the good fillets, these lovely um, fat fillets, into a tin other than by laying them in by hand. And we take it so much for granted, you know, you buy the tin off the shelf, you use some of it, chuck the rest out. I think what we've got to get into our heads is the true cost of food. And if we paid the true cost of food, then organic wouldn't seem as expensive as people presume it to be. But, by God, you'd use every bit of it. You wouldn't have that half bag of salad stuck to the fridge and it all frozen and then you sling it out and go and buy another one. If that bag of salad or that whole salad cost you five quid, you would eat all of it. And I think that's the whole thing about that, you know, as a, as a nation, we need to understand that. And it's a bit, I know it's a bit political, but it's very hard not to get into that, being a chef and, um, and doing a bit of research and finding out, you know, um, all these things. So those women sit there and they lay this stuff in and then it gets canned and processed. And there's the can and there's the printing and all of that. That actually for that humble little bit of fish that we just take so much for granted, a lot goes into it. So into our mix there, we've got our tuna, our potato, and our olive, capers. And what we need in there now, we're gonna put a little bit of mint. Now fresh mint is, again, this is, this is grown indoors. The stalks are very, very soft. You can use those as well. Don't put too much in there because it does get a little bit overpowering. And the reason I'm doing that is just instead of putting a bit of lemon zest in, which is very perfumed and aromatic, you get the same from mint. So we're adding a little different twist here. Is a little bit of fine chopped mint. That goes into the uh, fish cake mix. And again, if you're, if you're in, into a bit of a health kick, then cut down on the potatoes. Again, here there's no, no real measurements. I don't think that at home, many people actually measure anything savory. Cakes and baking, that's a pretty, that's, they call it the laboratory in the, um, in the French uh, culinary world. The kitchen, the pastry kitchen is the laboratory because everything has to be exact. Liquid, temperature, um, the dry goods, everything has to be exact. Whereas actually stuff like this and meat cookery and fish cookery, it's all about understanding the product. And so if you don't like something, don't put it in. But also, you know, the, the measurements, I'm sure that um, on the leaflet that you're sat on, we have some, um, we have some recipes there. But, um, you know, you follow them. If you understand the, the, the science of cooking slightly, you can actually apply, you know, your own little twist on it. Um, so, again, you know, any dish that has tomatoes, you don't like tomatoes, don't put them in. Find a substitute. You know, it's as simple as that. So there's our, our sort of fish cake mix with our minty sort of finish to it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just cook one of these um, as, a, as, a, as a large fish cake. Instead of doing the little little fiddly ones, you can do one large one, nice fried egg on it or a poached egg, and then you make a little simple dressing, and if you serve that with a green bean salad, you've in effect turned salad niçoise on its head and come up with something pretty unique in your own way. And if you don't want mint, then put basil, and if you don't want, um, you know, you can put your lime zest or your lemon zest, it's really just anything you want to do, it's, it's all about um, a little bit of experimentation and, and sort of making something for your, for your own. Now I've got two olive oils here from uh, those big shops. See, that's the thing, we all, we all have a go at the big supermarkets. I bet anybody here who's got a pension has most probably got some money tied into a supermarket. They don't know it, because the business model of a supermarket works really, really well. You're never gonna stop them, you're never gonna knock them out of business. What we gotta do is get them to work with us and work with the organic um, side of things just so there's a bit more understanding and not have a little, little aisle which is tucked away so far in the remotest part of the shop that people sort of swan past and get onto their products. We need to get them to, to, to embrace us a little bit more um, as we should them. Two olive oils I'm using. I've got a blended olive oil, pomace, and I've got the extra virgin. You should be able to see, if I can't hold it up against something white, but there is a difference in the color, the darker one and the lighter one. The lighter one is your pomace, blended. 
third, fourth, fifth pressing. They press everything. They press the mice that are in there, the, the stalks, the stems, the leaves, anything. The first press, that's your lovely olives. That's where they get the very gentle olive oil comes out. It's full of aromatic perfume and it's expensive. Cook with the cheap one. Not because it's cheap, but because it has all the qualities, all the properties of the good olive oil, but it hasn't got that lovely perfume. So when you cook with it, like an alcohol, like anything with aromatic flavor, heat, it evaporates. Use this one to dribble after. Make your dressings. If you're gonna griddle a piece of fish or you're gonna have your fish cake, dribble it on after when it goes to the table and you'll get the lovely smell of fresh olives um, and, and the goodness from it. For cooking, use the blended because it's got all the qualities, but it hasn't got that perfume. Much, much cheaper. So, into our pan, good wadge of olive oil. And now we're gonna make a cake up. Um, and like I said, it's, it's not, there's no sort of um, rocket science about this. If you wanna use a fancy cutter, you wanna make a pretty shape, it's all very, very, um, you know, very, very simple. You can make lots of little cakes. It's really what you want to do. And, and like I said, for the purpose of this, it wasn't so much to come up with something like, wow, you know, I, I've learned something um, on presentation or anything like that. It's more about using a tin product that we invariably wouldn't normally use. And just to give you an idea that actually maybe you're gonna give this a go yourself. So with our fish cake, give it a little dust with flour. And now at this stage, classically, you would run that fish cake through beaten egg and then into crumbs and then you would deep fry it or shallow fry it and turn it but we're just going to keep this as a simple simple basic fish cake that's going to go into our pan and again we just leave that alone and that will finish itself off wash the hands so we've got our pasta cooking in the oven We've got our fish cake now, it's gonna start cooking down. And you start it in quite a hot pan, obviously just to color, because again, there's nothing to cook. There's no raw fish. That's another thing that people don't cook enough fish at home because there's a bit of fear about cooking fish. And also, they think that the house is gonna stink of fish. Um, it will only if you have old fish. So there's this thing that, you know, fresh fish doesn't smell of fish, it smells of the sea. Um, so the same thing, if you buy inferior quality fish and then you start cooking it at home and the house starts smelling of fish, well, it's down to the fact that you are using um, fish that's a little bit tired. And that's another thing, buy fish that's on the bone. Buy fish that's a whole. Get the fish fishmonger to fill it in front of you because if you buy fillets, it's already a fish that's a little bit tired. He's taking it off, not because, well, it's for convenience, it's because that he's bought another couple of days um, life out of that fish that he can put it on his slab because you don't see the eyes and the gills which are the first bits to deteriorate on a fish, okay? So like I said, these are already cooked. So all we're doing is we're gonna get a bit of color and then warm them through. And have a look at the, uh, the pasta bake, that's coming on, lovely. And let's have a look at this fella here. Great, so we just fl flip that one over. So you can see, there's our salad niçoise um, cake. We're gonna leave that on the side just to warm through. In fact, I might pop that one through the oven as well. Lovely. And then we're gonna come back to our lovely fish cake. And you see now what's happened is, that's warming through lovely. What I'll do is I'll just reshape that and I'm gonna give that a lovely drizzle or a pour over of double cream with a little bit of lemon juice, which is gonna create an, an acidulated, um, well basically sour cream, um, an instant sour cream. Because you have to buy sour, you can't make sour cream because all of our cream, unfortunately, is, um, is pasteurized. Which is really strange, isn't it? I was, um, again, doing some more stuff about milk and cream and dairy that I didn't realize that back pre-formula um, milk for babies, that babies were actually fed um, sheep's milk because it's the closest to mother's milk. And I didn't know that sheep's milk, you can actually freeze sheep's milk and it won't separate. Like normal cow's milk will split. Sheep's milk stays as it is. It's easier for us to digest. And it was unpasteurized, so it had all the probiotics in there, which is the stuff, we buy probiotic little pots, which we pay a couple of quid for, and it's the stuff that was in the milk before they pasteurized it. What a con, why don't they, why don't they just let us buy? And if you buy it from the region where you live, you're getting all the goodness that's in the air and the sea and the land from that region. So if you live there, you're getting all the stuff that is, is, is you know, all the good stuff that's for that area. So, you know, I don't know, I just can't get my head around this, this sell in corn and rip off and all of that. It uh, just doesn't seem to make sense. But again, getting a little bit political again. So, right, let's get back to this lovely bit of fish cake here. I'm gonna pop this fella out. 
and we're going to reform this one. And all you're doing is you're just, you're just making the edges a little bit neater again, give it a little twist, and it doesn't take much to do that, just reshape it. We're going to serve that in a bowl. With a couple of lemon slices, because that's a little funky bit. And we've got our double cream. He's cleared it, he's running, see? Phil, he wants to go home, he's got two more dams and then he's clearing off. And this lad lives in Primrose Hill, he can walk home. He's, he's already packed it away. <laughs> so, thank you very much. <laughs> right, that's quite handy actually. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put the lemon juice straight into the double cream. There we are. Lemon juice goes in, and then all you need to do is stir that in. Thickens up slightly. Be careful if you over stir it, it will split and separate, as I said. And then what we're gonna do, we're just gonna pour that over our fish cake. And again, with this one, this is the one we had, um, we had our, we didn't have our basil in. Can't remember what we had in that one. What do we have in the fish cake? Mint. That's right, thank you. That's right, it wasn't, the mint wasn't in the pasta, that's right. It was basil in the pasta. Okay, a little bit of mint. So there's your sort of take on a, um, a Niçoise um, fish cake um, with, again, tin product. And there you go. So now back onto our lovely uh, stuffed pancakes. This is our Baltic uh, herring. Like I said, it's more from my neck of the woods, how I was brought up and um, the food I, I grew up on. And we're just going to lay these fellas out. And I'll just put the three on, I'll keep the other one. And there you go, you see from three tins of fish, we got three different, totally different um, dishes. And what I like about this is it's all pretty instant food, it's all doable at home, it's not really, really chefy. It's all sort of byproduct stuff, it's, and really you can do any combination or mix you really want. It's all down to you. And what I want to do is show you that tin fish isn't such a bad thing, and the fact that it's sometimes better because it's processed, picked, caught in its prime. So come up and have a taste. Give these dishes a go, please. And uh, thank you very much for your time, and hopefully see you again. Thank you.